Greetings and welcome to another coding session. Um, we are working on a uh, Minecraft server launcher with a bunch of um, uh, management and maintenance features. Um, <laughs> um, and the last time around uh, we ran into a kind of weird bug um, with the um, edit server configuration uh, dialog. Uh, for some reason we couldn't um, uh, re-edit um, the configuration profile um, once the accept button in the dialog had been clicked. Um, so I uh, did some off-stream debugging uh, to figure out exactly what went wrong and discovered a tiny oversight on my part. Um, so the oversight basically deals with uh, the um, identification numbers that are assigned to um, the actual uh, server hosting instance, um, all of the uh, different lists, uh, so we can properly synchronize um, um, all the different references to effectively the same things across uh, multiple different lists. Um, so um, I went to check out um, exactly what happened in um, the dialogue itself. Um, as you can see, I uh, put in some comments um, describing um, some of the problems, um, the process and so on. Um, in the uh, accept button of the server profile config dialog, which is um, this one, um, where we uh, specify the path and uh, give it a custom name, set some uh, memory settings and such. Um, in the accept button in here, um, previously, uh, we basically just created uh, a new um, profile containing the data and then put that into uh, the dialog's uh, profile property. Uh, so whichever object was uh, creating and using the uh, dialog could then retrieve the information. But um, the um, previous way of doing it uh, basically just um, um, created a fresh new profile. Uh, so uh, that effectively told uh, the system that, hey, this is a new profile. Um, but since we are passing an existing profile to the dialog, we kind of need to save that ID uh, reference um, to keep things properly synchronized. So what happened was that when we edited an existing profile, uh, the dialog would return what equals uh, a fresh dialog, which meant that uh, the next time the uh, profiles get synch synchronized, um, <laughs> um, thank you very much for the follow. And um, that's one of the reasons that I'm doing these streams, trying to teach people um, what goes into designing the actual code. Um, a lot of um, tutorials and so on, they b describe the code, uh, show the code and um, how to get there, but all the intermediate steps in between, uh, they kind of get lost, uh, unfortunately. So um, I'm doing these uh, projects to kind of, um, well, let people in on the secrets of what goes on um, in the process of actually producing the code. Um, I think that's in some respects a little more important to, to uh, learn instead of just, oh, um, copy-paste this piece of code because it works. <laughs> um, in any case, back to the problem at hand. Um, so when um, the dialog returns, which is basically here, uh, this is the entire um, pop the dialog, um, check whether uh, the accept button was clicked, in which case the dialog would return dialog result OK. Um, as you can see, on purpose, I left in the um, debug line that tells us uh, the ID for the edited profile. Um, 
whether it's an existing profile with an existing pre-existing uh, ID uh, or a new profile um, that needs to have an ID number assigned uh, is something that's handled in the um, uh, check server profiles method um, which uh, is called right here um, so uh, all of that stuff happens automatically um, but uh, if um, the dialog by default always returns a new profile or an indication that it's a new profile then of course all of the ID numbers will eventually end, end up being out of sync which is exactly what happened here. So uh, the quick and easy fix uh, for this particular issue uh, was to simply just uh, save the previous ID um, uh, basically grab uh, whatever ID was assigned to um, uh, the uh, profile property which contains the server profile uh, so if a new profile is passed then uh, that ID will automatically be uh, negative 1 indicating it's a new profile however if an existing profile is passed then that ID will be whatever the uh, check server uh, profiles method had assigned to it um, but we previously couldn't do this so to fix this uh, particular issue we simply added in a new constructor for um, the server profile structure uh, that also accepts um, an ID initially uh, so um, in doing that uh, we can then here assign whatever ID it had instead of forcing it to be negative one and that magically fixed the issue um, that we were having so um, we no longer have uh, orphaned profiles and uh, desynchronized uh, profiles and we can in fact ac uh, edit existing profiles and have it correctly update um, the changed information uh, save it to disk and um, all is well so, um, just to quickly recap, um, the issue was being able to click the edit button, make some kind of change in here, click the accept button and be able to re-click the edit to have it p correctly sh uh, show up the um, or display the um, um, chosen settings for the profile. And as you can see, um, down in the output uh, it correctly throws the debug information uh, ID for edited profile 1 and if I accept again it'll say 1 again. There we go. Previously it would say negative 1 um, because of that oversight um, but this fixes the uh, particular issue we were having. Very nice. Alright, now that that's fixed uh, we can get rid of the debug information. There we go. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there are still a couple of things that I would like to put into this project. Um, one of them being uh, the ability to um, basically have the um, uh, restart schedules, the uh, backup schedules and so on. Um, be able to um, throw a message in chat warning the players that uh, the server is about to shut down for um, maintenance restart or daily backup or whatever uh, the message might be. Um, so um, what exactly do we need to uh, get into that kind of beast? Well um, I went ahead and uh, scouted a few things on um, the official Minecraft wiki. Uh, one of the things that we are going to need in order to be able to warn all players that we are about to restart is that we need some kind of chat inf uh, command that we can send to uh, the server um, and have it um, basically send that particular message to um, every player that's currently online. Um, for that purpose um, 
the uh, way to basically grab all the information we need is um, to look up the commands. Uh, all of the, these different commands are um, uh, basically executable within a command block or you can execute them in the console yourself just to uh, test that it actually works. Um, the uh, target selection for um, who should receive a particular message uh, would be um, all players which would be the at um, A selector and um, in doing in um, adding the at a uh, selector, it will effectively grab any player that's online. Um, so there are tons of options that um, we can go through uh, if we really need to at some point. But um, the interesting thing is actually right down here. So um, here's a nice example of how exactly. Um, uh, we should um, send a text message to uh, the, ser the Minecraft server to have it output uh, some kind of uh, message in chat uh, targeting everyone. Um, uh, for anyone um <coughs> a little bit familiar with Minecraft stuff uh, and Java, um, parts of this should be a little bit uh, obvious. Uh, it's actually built up from um, a um, JSON um, uh, description. Um, um, <laughs> uh, as such, I haven't really um, opened up the project uh, for uh, contributions, uh, but you're more than welcome to um, grab the project off GitHub and make whatever changes to it uh, you feel like. Um, uh, publish it yourself if you want to. Um, I'm doing this completely open source, so um, uh, do with the code what, what you would like to. Um, I I'm sharing this um, for the purpose of uh, giving people a little bit of understanding of uh, how things are put together and the thought processes behind it and design ideas and such. Um, but uh, be warned, um, not all uh, aspects of the code is uh, written for, um, how should I put this, um, getting things done quick and easy. Um, in some respects, I've put in um, um, how should I put this, uh, manual code up of um, things like, for example, there's a uh, sorting function for uh, the schedule handling, uh, where um, I actually went in and manually built the sorting code instead of simply just using link to uh, sort it, uh, which I would have done in another project, but I chose to do um, the sorting code manually uh, to showcase how it's actually done. Um, because um, the more I see uh, people uh, using libraries and using uh, methods here and there, um, the more I'm concerned that uh, the skills um, of, say, for example, writing a sorting code um, kind of get lost in uh, obscurity um, somewhere. So. Um, uh, um, in such cases, of course, uh, just replace the code uh, with uh, something more efficient, uh, something easier, um, feel free. Um, but um, if you want to put your own spin on this, um, by all means, go ahead. Um, I try to get the code um, synced to GitHub on the same day that I do the stream, um, unless I need to do some weird kind of bug hunting or um, uh, comments uh, slash documentation updating. Uh, in that case, I might wait until the day after the stream. Uh, but for the most part, the, the code will be on GitHub the same day as I do the stream. Um, in any case, um, actually, there's a, uh, as part of the, um, uh, yeah, let's go um, grab that quick. There we go. Um, one, uh, there are two um, separate classes in here that might be of interest. Uh, the uh, source remote console, 
um, this uh, particular class is um, written as a quick um, wrapper that um, um, uh, basically wraps the entire protocol for uh, communicating with Valve's uh, source remote console protocol um, um, with uh, everything needed for authentication and everything uh, which means that this particular class uh, is actually um, useful for both uh, Minecraft servers and uh, say for example Counter-Strike uh, servers uh, things like that that uh, utilize this particular protocol uh, it's a completely um, 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 what's it called? Um, I lost my trailer thought here. Um, it's a complete class that you can easily uh, instantiate and uh, have it do all the complex stuff for you. Um, another one would be in the config tools, which is the ini file uh, class that basically wraps. Um, um, a somewhat simplistic way of um, accessing uh, uh, the old school uh, ini files, um, uh, including editing uh, sections, deleting them, uh, overriding them, clearing them, and so on. Um, um, so while creating the um, ini file class, someone suggested reflection uh, to uh, kind of add the different groups and sections to uh, an object structure by their names. Um, I have chosen not to do that for a multitude of different reasons. Uh, reflections uh, is a nice thing to have and use, um, but um, it has a tendency to um, well, um, take quite an amount of time to uh, go through, making it uh, a bit slower. Um, and sometimes I find it uh, a little more difficult to work with things when you need to get rid of, um, say, an entire group of stuff. Um, in any case, um, it's all up there. Feel free to grab it, use it, uh, do whatever. Um, the code's there for um, anyone to use. Just um, be kind enough to uh, reference uh, the original authors, uh, pay the uh, necessary respects uh, as is supposed to happen for um, anything open source <laughs> and sometimes doesn't quite happen. Um, in any case, um, back to the thing at hand. Um, yeah, see, um, when um, uh, the reason that I'm actually taking a look at Telraw uh, is because Telraw will allow us to um, put things like colors um, into a chat message. So if we just send a um, uh, basically uh, a raw um, a chat message, um, it'll just show up in white and for the most part Minecraft servers and communities um, generally use uh, white text for um, general chat. Uh, some communities use uh, purple uh, or magenta text for uh, private messages. Some switch over and use a gray shade instead. Um, but there is a distinction between private messages and public messages. Um, um, if you've at any point in time uh, have looked at Minecraft community videos or uh, multiplayer videos um, you'll see that there's a, um, a multitude of uh, colored messages happening in chat. Um, <coughs> some are advertisements for um, uh, oh this week we're um, having a sale on ranks or um, uh, remember to sign up on our site and um, remember to vote for this month's um, whatever competition, blah 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 blah, stuff like that. Um, and most of these messages um, are generated by uh, miscellaneous plugins that are installed on the server. Uh, in our case, uh, we are um, building an application that can launch and uh, monitor um, what is going on on the server itself. Um, We've built a, a scheduling system. Uh, there's a um, backup handler uh, that'll, that is able to um, compress uh, the world files into a zip file uh, for doing daily backups. Um, 
and um, uh, the next step would be to implement uh, some kind of chat message that um, warns the online players that we're about to shut down for um, daily or hourly restart or um, every eight hours or however. Um, so um, to prevent this particular warning message from basically drowning in the sea of white messages going on in chat, um, I would like to be able to put some color on um, the particular uh, warning message. Um, <clears throat> since Telraw expects um, a JSON object um, to be passed containing chat elements, um, uh, I went ahead and found um, this one, uh, which is actually uh, linked to um, at the bottom of the commands page on the official... Um, no, actually it's linked right here, Telraw generator. Um, this one lets us basically build up uh, an example of what the uh, message um, will look like in code. So, um, just for the sake of um, giving this a, um, uh, a spin, uh, we'll do, say, for example, um, let's see, a bracket, um, I don't know what color we should make this. Um, da, 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 da. We'll do a, a gray and leave it at the bracket and then uh, add text and we'll do server and um, I don't know, a blue. There we go. And then add another one close bracket uh, with a space to the gray. There we go. And the output preview down here um, will show what it, what it will look like. Um, then we'll do a, um, I don't know, uh, scheduled uh, server restart in 10 minutes, for example. And we'll do this uh, yellow. That should be sufficiently um, highlighted. So, um, scheduled server restart in 10 minutes, as an example. Um, in here, we could even um, change the uh, 10 to, say, for example, be red. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much, and you have a great day, and thanks for uh, stopping by. Um, uh, yeah, let's um, get the uh, 10 uh, colored red instead. Um, so let's uh, edit this one and just cut it here, like so, and then add another one, which would be the 10, but make this one a bright red. Um, which would be this one. There we go. And then um, do the uh, minutes, like so, and do that in yellow as well. There we go. So, scheduled server restart in 10 minutes. Um, looking at this, um, it kind of already uh, spells out an option for, um, say, creating templated uh, text. Uh, so if we were to... Um, we could, of course, hard code this into um, the application and then just um, uh, effectively grab a copy of uh, the command that uh, this particular generator uh, shows us. Um, and um, just implement it as a kind of a static uh, warning message. But um, what if this um, launcher, uh, for example, ends up running in, say, a, a German uh, uh, community uh, where only uh, German-speaking uh, players are on? Um, they would then have to contend with an English mes message popping up every uh, 
uh, time it needs to do a restart. Um, what if it was a French community, for example, or a Spanish or uh, a Danish, for that matter? Um, so I'm kind of thinking it would be interesting to uh, see if we could set this up as a uh, text that can be uh, fully customized. Um, basically also allowing um, whoever is using the program to uh, set up these um, warning messages exactly how he or she wants it. Uh, so that would be um, the ultimate um, customization option for um, uh, using this particular feature. And uh, in this day and age, everybody wants customization. So, um, building something that can effectively generate that um, particular set of um, uh, j uh, JSON chat elements uh, shouldn't be all that big of an issue if we go by the same model as um, this particular generator does. Um, however, um, before we um, hurriedly go and grab that as a template for uh, building these customized messages, um, there's another option that uh, I would like to mention. Um, when uh, the game is running and we are going into multiplayer and we're attempting to uh, connect to a server somewhere or get a server listing, uh, we usually get a message here that uh, is basically a copy of the text from the server properties file uh, in the MOTD um, uh, setting. That's the message of the day. Um, one interesting fact about that particular entry in the server properties file is that you can actually put um, um, color sequences into that text and there is even an option to um, break up the line so you effectively get two lines of text uh, to display uh, along with your um, uh, server profile. Uh, so, um, <coughs> the um, major problem here is that um, the server properties file does not accept um, uh, the JSON um, chat elements. Uh, let's see, we'll go grab the uh, server properties from the vanilla setup, which is right here, uh, just to um, show it. There we go. So, um, this would be the current uh, MOTD. It says uh, Sheridan's Vanilla uh, 112.2. Um, this is uh, highly customizable. Um, by means of the uh, section symbol. Um, <coughs> and um, basically by following uh, the color codes format right here, um, we can color uh, specific parts of the text um, and thereby make our um, message of the day uh, color coded instead. Uh, now, since the server isn't running, it of course can't connect to it and get the information. Um, but we do have the option to use uh, the sections uh, sign, um, followed by a hex reference uh, to which particular color we want to put on. Um, that's the format uh, that's required for the server properties, and I believe it's used in um, the, the data format for um, um, a book and quill as well. Um, but it isn't particularly compatible with um, the other uh, format, which is basically a raw um, set of JSON uh, settings. So we kind of need to build something that's capable of effectively producing both. Now, um, a third minor problem that uh, we may easily run into is the fact that the section sign is not always available on all keyboard code pages. Um, basically that's the uh, localization for um, how your keyboard is laid out uh, for your particular language. Um, uh, on some uh, layouts uh, the section sign simply isn't available. Uh, so uh, to use it you would have to go 
um, say, use a, a character sheet or um, copy paste it off a web page or something um, to get that particular uh, symbol in there. Um, to kind of get past that particular problem, um, uh, the Minecraft community years ago uh, actually decided on um, using a different symbol um, as part of um, uh, text formatting in chat. Um, some plugins, the Essentials plugin for uh, plugin-based servers, um, if permission is given, uh, actually allows um, <coughs> excuse me, um, players to um, colorize their text in, in the chat um, on the fly. And they do this by using the ampersand symbol instead. Um, so, um, while we can build um, the text uh, setup uh, pretty much any way we want, um, we could even just uh, have a text box where we put in the text and then uh, say, for example, a secondary part where we can uh, select part of the text and put a color on it and thereby colorize it uh, and have something in the background um, handle it for us. Um, uh, or we could uh, do something similar to uh, how the community has been doing this for God knows how many years now, um, by simply letting us, um, as part of the configuration, uh, say if we go in here and edit the um, configuration here, uh, this would be the message of the day text. Um, so if we were to um, just follow the ampersand um, symbol setup, then we're covering a lot of uh, different uh, language layouts on keyboards um, because uh, pretty much every um, uh, code page uh, localization setup for keyboard uh, in some way or another um, grants the use of the ampersand symbol, uh, which is uh, this one, of course. Um, so, pretty much everybody in the world would be able to um, type this particular symbol on their keyboards. Um, so, if we use that as um, an initial uh, point of reference, um, we could potentially um, um, get something, oh sorry, I needed this one, uh, get something written that can uh, build this up without uh, requiring that we build this super complicated uh, setup manually. Um, <coughs> we want it to be easy to use after all. Ah. Okay, so, um, um, Another thing that I would very much like to um, build up as part of the, all these potentially customized chat messages is um, the ability to, say, configure a, um, a customized um, chat prompt. Uh, so um, whenever somebody types in chat, it usually shows their name followed by whatever message they typed in. Um, and there, it would be nice if we could do something similar for um, server-specific messages, um, just like this one, for example. Um, so, I would like to uh, set up um, a customizable prompt like this, uh, so we can define that separately. Uh, say, um, um, if somebody doesn't like, uh, say, this uh, gray and blue th thing that I chose here, just because random, <laughs> um, they could change it um, along with uh, whatever custom message they want to put on there. Um, so, um, uh, if we do a separate prompt, uh, then we can simply uh, just use that as a template and then add all the other stuff um, to the final message as well. Um, and um, in building up these things, um, it would be kind of cool if we could um, basically just, just grab, say, um, 
the ampersand noted uh, text, throw it into some kind of converter and either get um, the proper format for um, the MOTD or the proper JSON setup for a tell raw. Um, so let's see if we can build something like that. <coughs> okay. Um, for now we will uh, leave this um, uh, generator as a template um, and then uh, go from there and see what uh, we can get working. All right, so um, we know that we are going to need uh, some kind of class to handle this. Um, we also need to uh, work out a few um, uh, references for uh, this particular class and for doing that we kind of need to go back here I think um, yes here we are um, to properly reference uh, the 16 different colors and they um, um, to some extent match um, the colors uh, of the wool and colored clay and all that stuff um, with one major exception um, <coughs> in chat um, the um, seventh color um, referenced as uh, six is gold and that would be equal to what's brown in uh, the wool um, so that's one change there uh, the rest of them are pretty much the same um, uh, as the wool colors <coughs> um, so that's one uh, thing that's uh, notable, uh, a notable difference. Um, as we can see here, uh, the actual color codes as referenced here, uh, say um, minutes is uh, referenced right here as having a color called yellow with all lowercase letters. Uh, which would be the technical name for it right here. So we definitely need to um, keep these in mind. Uh, they are vitally important if they are um, put in incorrectly. Um, the chat will not render um, uh, the message um, in the correct color. Uh, so that's something that we definitely need to keep, uh, keep an eye on. Um, on top of that, there are a number of different other uh, formatting um, options available, like, for example, uh, the obfuscated, bold, strike through, underline, italic. Uh, those are additional um, uh, rendering methods to uh, change how the text actually looks. Um, we could put those in there as well if we wanted to. Uh, for now, I think we'll just stick with uh, the color formatting. Um, and then uh, it really wouldn't be all that big of an issue adding in additional formatting options like uh, doing bold or um, uh, italic or underlined, uh, stuff like that. Um, th this generator is even able to uh, put in things like uh, a hover effect or um, a clickable link um, behind a uh, text caption. Um, tons of different options uh, available to us. Um, we'll stick with the colors for now. Uh, all the other stuff could um, easily be added on later if need be, um, since they are uh, basically just an extension of um, um, the uh, JSON uh, chat elements uh, handling. Okay, um, we'll stick with the formatting codes and uh, get some um, chat stuff done. Um, so, um, we'll add a new class and um, since we don't exactly need to, um, uh, how should I put this, um, we don't we wouldn't exactly need to instantiate anything um, every time we need uh, to create a new uh, chat build up, uh, so we'll simply make this a static class. Um, we'll call this um, a chat converter. And move it up to the uh, library. 
library reference, do it as a static, and then we'll simply just implement the, set the uh, uh, methods that we need to um, properly convert this text. Um, of course, at some point, we also need to store uh, all this customized text, uh, so um, um, we can save whatever customized messages were put in here. Uh, we'll probably have to do a couple of new dialogues. Um, we'll probably have to uh, modify our existing uh, server profile dialogue. Um, no, not that one. Um, I meant to grab this one. Um, we need to customize the uh, message of the day to allow for um, color additions and um, um, the ability to uh, do a, a new line uh, so we can break it up and have two messages um, or uh, two lines of uh, message of the day text um, going on the multiplayer profile uh, that people will see when they want to join it. Um, so we we still have some UI stuff to do. Okay, so, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, we kind of want to uh, set up a format that uh, to us is um, um, s uh, something that we can throw into the chat converter and have it output either um, the JSON chat elements that we need for uh, sending a tail raw to the server or um, um, fetch uh, a properly formatted setup that can go in the uh, server properties file. So um, two methods, but um, we need to settle on a specific format going into uh, the chat converter. Um, to do that, um, we'll grab the example from uh, the generator before. Um, um, just as an example, example of input. So we'll, um, and how did we do this? We set it up as a uh, bracket server, uh, scheduled server restart in, yes. Um, so it goes something like this, uh, scheduled server restart in 10 minutes. Okay, um, to copy um, the color settings for it, um, uh, including color tags, um, we will have to do something like um, first figure out um, the number for the gray, which is seven. Um, so we'll do and seven the bracket. Following that we chose the um, light blue which is 9. So we'll change it to 9. Type in server. Then we need the uh, gray again so um, another 7 followed by the close bracket. And then it's got a space in there. Um, and then we did a scheduled server restart uh, um, in the yellow, uh, so we'll go fetch the yellow, which is E, uh, and here again, um, um, usually Minecraft will be case sensitive on these. Uh, on our setup, um, we will do some case conversions so it doesn't matter, uh, just to make it easier to type in these uh, particular codes. Uh, so we'll put E there and then uh, grab the text like so. Um, and then the next part, um, just to recap quick, um, would be um, the 10 in a bright red, um, which is, um, let's see, that's uh, C. So we'll put in and C, and then the 10. And then we need to switch back to the yellow. So we'll do um, the AND E uh, to switch back to yellow and then grab the space minutes. So it becomes um, kind of um, um, a little bit messed up when uh, you read the text directly like this, um, but this would be the quick and easy way of generating 
uh, the actual color setup of um, what the text should look like containing the color tags. Um, this basically also follows an age-old uh, color formatting setup uh, that has been used on IRC chat for 20-30 years if not more. Um, uh, so it's a familiar format. Um, if we further split this up then um, the prompt would be um, say this part and I'll um, without the quotation marks um, just to ensure that we actually have uh, the trailing space uh, as part of the visual uh, commenting um, um, followed by whatever message needs to go out. Um, there we go. Of course in the case of the MOTD message um, we wouldn't have to put in the prompt um, so that part doesn't really matter. Um, um, so we don't really need to uh, focus on that too much um, because that message will of course be um, built up differently. Um, Alright, so um, basically um, this uh, setup needs to be converted into um, actually let's put some um, uh, uh, description documentation in here and then just um, convert this into a multi-line setup um, like so. All right. There we go. All right, so um, another part of this um, would be uh, the above needs to be converted into um, and then we will um, grab a copy of this quick um, just to kind of showcase to ourselves what this needs to become um, and for the sake of um, remembering to send this to everyone I'll change it to A and then we'll um, format this uh, properly so we can uh, distinguish each individual um, uh, JSON element here. Um, let's see, get rid of some of this stuff. Um, Alright, so I know from uh, previous uh, checking that uh, this empty part is not needed. I'm not quite sure why um, that tell raw generator puts it in there, possibly a bug in his code, um, but it's not needed. Um, uh, so for now we'll just break these up quick uh, so we can distinguish them, uh, which would be this one and then the closing part of it. Alright, so um, each individual um, element in here contains some kind of um, um, output of the text uh, followed by a color reference um, like so. Um, so that's basically how we uh, build up the individual uh, color parts uh, of the text that we want to send. So we need to basically replicate this um, and um, down here, that space is included. Uh, whoops, there we go. And then again for this one, um, and like so, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, um, as you can see, these uh, color references um, directly correlate to. Um, See, we have the gray with lowercase, the blue, uh, yellow, red, and they directly correlate to uh, the technical name as listed on the wiki. So, 
that part definitely fits. Um, the other parts of them are of course uh, things like um, making the text bold and so on. Um, we might that add some of that uh, at a later time. Uh, for now it's not really needed. Um, so this would be uh, one kind of conversion that basically grabs um, say this line for example and converts it into um, this entire tail raw. Um, another kind of uh, conversion that this particular class needs to be able to um, perform conversion is um, that would be something like um, let's say um, actually let's get that particular text down here let's say I wanted a copy of this um, uh, and have um, say Sheridan uh, show up in um, I don't know Lime uh, so that uh, would require us to grab the lime, which is called green here, um, and is referenced as A. Um, let's see if I can actually make it, yep, there. Um, that would then become Sheridan, and then let's do um, the apostrophe in, um, I don't know, uh, white. Uh, so we'll do a white. Um, and then do the S as a dark green, which would be 2, uh, so 2, and then um, add the S of course. Uh, vanilla we will do uh, in gold, so that would be 6, um, vanilla, and then the one, um, let's see, we will do the 1.12.2, um, we'll do the, the numbers in grey and the periods in dark grey, so that's 7 and 8, just to, um, no, actually, um, yeah, we'll do those in grey and uh, dark grey, so that would mean we need a 7 here to indicate the 1, uh, which is excuse me, this one, and then switch to uh, the dark grey, which would be 8, uh, to get the first period. Add that in there, and then switch back to the grey uh, to get the 12. Switch back to the dark grey to get the period, and switch back to the grey again to get the trailing 2. So. Um, this would then, um, if we do this correctly, um, would then have it show up with uh, Sheridan in the bright uh, green or lime color. Uh, the apostrophe would be white, uh, the small s, uh, or lowercase s following um, Sheridan uh, would show up in the dark green, um, followed by vanilla in gold, and then the um, uh, switching light grey and dark grey um, for the version number. Um, and this would be uh, stuff that goes into the MOTD. Um, so we need methods that are capable of doing these kind of conversions, um, taking um, uh, the original um, and uh, set up uh, as an input. <coughs> um, doing the uh, um, uh, section sign based one uh, should be fairly simple uh, because, um, oh, that's just a replace, um, which uh, is the quick and easy way of um, converting it. However, if uh, you have something like, um, uh, say, um, ETHO and um, uh, I can't spell his name. Um, do mine uh, sumavoid uh, do Minecraft. So if we have this as part of the name, and we add in some color coding, then replacing uh, simply replacing the ampersand symbol with the section sign um, basically will convert this into uh, a section sign, which would kind of look weird as part of the uh, MOTD. 
Uh, so we kind of need to loop through them and figure out exactly which ones need to be replaced um, so we don't end up um, replacing one that's actually supposed to be there uh, by mistake. Uh, so uh, we need to put, put a little bit of intelligence into that replacement. Um, and it's, it's something that we will uh, take care of. Um, in any case, um, these are um, some of the um, uh, inputs and outputs that we expect from this class. Uh, so we'll see if we can get uh, this done. All right, so um, collapse this. Uh, we might need to build some helper methods of different kinds to uh, assist us in doing this. Um, but um, we'll, we'll get the stuff set up. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we know ne we need a um, JSON thing, and we know we need a MOTD uh, format. Uh, so we'll simply just um, uh, create the two methods. Uh, we'll do a one two. Um, Christ, I can't count today. One two three four five. Um, public methods. There we go. So we need one that um, converts to JSON. Oops, region. And we need one that converts to MOTD. So we'll simply call them this, just for the sake of simplicity. Public static. So we need to return a string, uh, which is the result. So, um, string, um, we'll call this chat text just because, and then to keep it from um, warning us about uh, a missing return value, uh, we'll just do an, an empty uh, string to begin with. Um, of course, um, it's all stuff that will be changed as we add in the code to handle all this stuff. There we go. All right, so um, <coughs> uh, first of all, we need to figure out whether um, there are any valid um, uh, uh, control code references uh, within the past chat text. Um, and those would be um, uh, basically grabbing um, the and zero, one, two, three, up to F. Um, check whether they actually exist within the chat code itself. Um, if one of them shows up, then we know that we need to format this particular um, setup. Uh, we'll do the uh, MOTD for uh, one uh, first uh, because well, it's the easiest one to do. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that we will go through and see if we can support uh, both using the ampersand um, uh, setup as well as the section sign, because uh, some users might uh, be able to use the section sign and will choose to use it, um, which basically would render um, our um, particular conversion class uh, useless if it wasn't able to support both of them. Um, so, we'll, um, we'll make it capable of handling both. All right, um, so if we accept in, say, um, let's grab uh, just for the sake of argument, um, we'll s uh, grab this, um, and um, put a copy of it down here, um, input sample and um, output uh, expected output. There we go. We expect this as an output and we'll expect this as an input. Uh, that one and this one and this one right there right there and right there. However, um, 
since we want to make this uh, compatible with the other one, um, we could actually just grab this, put it up here, and thereby indicating that uh, this one will be able to support both of them. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, for the most part, um, anything Java related is um, fairly case sensitive. Um, the entire game is case sensitive, so um, uh, we can either expect that these codes have to be uh, case sensitive for it to work, um, or we can um, uh, kind of force um, uh, a conversion, uh, so we can um, basically support both upper and lower case um, uh, hex codes, um, which would be in this case the A. Um, so let's see if um, we can figure out a way to see if the the past chat text actually contains uh, one of these um, um, uh, control tags. Uh, so um, to do that we will do a simple check method um, that will um, go through uh, whatever ta text is passed to it and see if uh, one of the um, um, expected control tags are in there. Helper methods. So um, we'll do a um, method here called something, 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 something. Um, so we'll do private static and um, uh, we'll call this um, has control codes and then expect some kind of chat text um, as an input. Uh, whoops, and then return false here. Alright, so um, to check this quick, um, we'll just do a uh, quick uh, lowercase of this um, text equals chat text dot to lower and then we'll go through and see if we can find one or the other. Um, we need the um, um, uh, actual control codes uh, so we kinda need to reference uh, 0 up to F um, at some later point if we decide to put some of this stuff in here we need to add those as well. Um, for now we'll just stick with the colors, so we'll do um, this one, um, uh, control codes, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. There we go. That's it. Um, we also have two control symbols um, to support, so we'll add the, those in as well control symbols, which would be the ampersand and the section sign. Alright, so um, then we'll loop through and see if we can find a proper match. Um, uh, so first of all, um, we will grab the um, uh, uh, control codes so uh, loop this uh, while it's longer than blah blah blah. There we go. So we'll loop through uh, however many codes are in here. Um, and then we'll do another loop that loops through how many um, control symbols are in here. Um, uh, S, whoops. That would be like this instead, control symbols. And then we will simply check if there is a um, occurrence of um, whatever control symbol we've got plus whatever control code we're at. And if um, one of them matches, um, then we'll simply just return true um, and break out of the uh, loops. So if um, the text, which is now lowercase, um, has an index of um, which would then be the um, control symbols 
uh, S plus uh, the control codes uh, that's C um, and that is uh, greater than oh, int wood um, right um, let's see we'll do uh, there we go so if um, the current control symbol and the current control code um, if there is an index of this uh, within the text then we know we found a proper um, uh, uh, reference to one of these control codes. Uh, so um, here um, found a reference to a control code. Uh, so return true. There we go. Basically what this uh, uh, setup does is um, it loops through uh, however many control codes we've put in here, uh, since we're only messing with the uh, color codes at the moment, um, we only need to reference uh, the 16 different color codes, uh, the 16 hex values for uh, the 16 colors that are available. Um, and then we'll add in uh, the two control characters. So the first loop through, um, first loop through, we'll check Four, and that would then be um, the and, um, the ampersand, and the zero. Uh, so it'll check uh, to see if this occurrence actually, um, uh, if there is an occurrence of this within uh, the lowercase text. Uh, if there is, it'll return true. Um, so basically, we could end up uh, having to loop through um, uh, 32 checks uh, per. Uh, chat text being passed to this particular method. Uh, uh, so um, it's something that uh, should be done uh, with uh, some amount of care um, because we kind of need to um, work out whether um, um, uh, we need to actually call this particular method uh, and kind of um, um, be a little relaxed with how many times we call this particular setup, uh, just to um, avoid it uh, spending too many uh, um, resources doing it, um, basically CPU cost. Uh, the more times that you uh, loop through nested setups and the longer they are, the longer it'll take. So pretty simple. Um, all right, so first of all, we need to figure out, do we have an actual control code? Um, so. Uh, if um, this particular chat text uh, does have uh, some kind of um, control codes, then we definitely need to handle it. And if it doesn't, uh, then we'll simply just return the chat text here at the bottom, and then we'll add in a return here somewhere. Um, all right. So. Um, Um, we could end up in a situation where um, just because uh, somebody thinks it's a great idea to see if the application actually works, uh, we could end up in a situation where somebody thinks it's an awesome idea to basically grab uh, the um, two different formats and mixing them up. Um, just for the fun of it, to see if it actually works. Um, people could do that. Um, always expect the user of your program um, to either be um, an evil bastard, pardon my French, uh, or uh, somebody that simply just doesn't get it. Uh, so if you go into it with those expectations and program um, with the mindset that uh, your application needs to be able to uh, catch some kind of um, oversight or uh, actual stupidity or somebody being evil just to see if they can actually crash your application, um, then you'll end up with a product that um, for the most part will be 
fairly stable um, and will be able to uh, handle pe people being jerks. Um, I'm not saying that every user is stupid. Um, I'm just saying that it's my responsibility as the code developer uh, to expect um, stupidity going on when using my program. Um, um, with that kind of mindset in mind, um, you have the advantage that um, you might go up and catch uh, some situations where um, somebody does something um, halfway, uh, clicks the OK button and um, uh, expects your application to be able to handle a half-finished uh, uh, setup, for example. Um, um, that could also happen. Uh, so, um, if you go into it with the mindset that um, this uh, particular interaction with the user and my code uh, needs to be able to handle that uh, the code doesn't understand um, what I had in mind when I designed this particular setup or um, because I haven't been good enough to at explaining how to use it, uh, or it do doesn't make any logical sense uh, to the user for whatever reason, um, or somebody does uh, half a setup and then clicks OK to save whatever part he's already done uh, to go to lunch or a meeting or whatever, um, then um, at least then you don't end up in a situation where A, your application crashes, or B, uh, you put a demand on the user that the user might not be ready to um, um, complete right uh, at this moment. So um, there are a number of different uh, reasons to um, um, try and develop from the mindset that um, expect stupidity in interaction with um, your code. Um, I know it's kind of harsh to say, but um, that's basically uh, the root of it. <coughs> Okay, so um, we figured out whether there is uh, some kind of control code in there. Uh, whether there's one or 200 doesn't matter. Uh, we know that there is uh, at least one valid control code within this chat text. What that control code is, we don't care. Okay, so um, the next thing that we um, need to be able to do with uh, this particular setup is basically just go in and um, see if we can find some kind of um, way to uh, loop through whatever's being put in here since we accept both the and uh, uh, or sorry ampersand um, color code and the uh, section sign uh, color code. Um, the safe way of doing the replacement here is um, well basically to do something similar to the uh, control code check. Um, we'll put in uh, setups and then um, uh, do, do a replacement. Um, um, Again, here uh, we know that um, we could end up in a situation where um, all of the co uh, text uh, that comes in is uh, full uppercase um, in case somebody decides that uh, chat shouting is a very good idea. Um, <laughs> um, so the, even the, the um, color codes could be uppercase. We don't know. Um, so. Uh, since we know that uh, mine, the Minecraft server uh, expects that these color codes uh, should be in lowercase, um, we kind of make sure, need to make sure that uh, they actually become lowercase. Um, so how do we do this? Well, um, the really cool thing about strings is that um, they are actually an array of chars. Um, which means that um, we have some kind of indexing ability within uh, the string. So if we figure out where a specific control code is, uh, then we can easily go in and re replace both the um, uh, control symbol as well as the um, um, control uh, uh, code itself. Uh, because um, 
if we do find an instance of this particular uh, combination of um, um, uh, control simple and uh, control character uh, or code, um, then we know for a fact that both positions are valid within the string itself. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to find it. Uh, say, for example, if somebody ended up with, um, uh, say, an and uh, uh, there and a section sign there, then uh, these uh, end trailing um, uh, symbols would not be a valid uh, control code or control tag. Uh, so um, actually we should probably uh, rename this to tags, come to think of it. Has control tags, we'll rename it to that. Makes more sense. Tags, there we go. And I forgot to reference this. And we should probably put some documentation up here as well. Whoops. Um, checks the past uh, string to see if there are any control tags in it. Um, the chat text to check uh, returns true if at least one valid um, control tag was found, otherwise false. There we go. Now we've got some uh, proper um, documentation for that as well. Okay, so, um, pardon me. Um, all right, uh, since we know for a fact that we are going to run into uh, a couple of problems doing this, um, uh, we'll uh, effectively um, see if we can um, uh, borrow a bit from this particular setup because we do know that we need to find uh, uh, an occurrence of um, one of these uh, control code setups um, before we can actually start uh, manipulating it. Uh, so we may want to um, do a more um, uh, centralized um, uh, accessing of um, these particular uh, uh, control symbols and control codes uh, so we can manipulate them in one section and thereby update everything that deals with it. Uh, so uh, for now we will um, migrate them up here. Um, there we go, grab these, move them up here and make them private, because uh, they don't need to be exposed. There we go. So, um, this would be the control symbols, and this would be the actual control codes. There we go. Um, and then, of course, we need to change these to match up. And effectively, um, this particular setup is basically the same thing we need to do in terms of finding those uh, control tags um, and then fixing them uh, whenever we um, uh, find a, a specific position for it. So we'll go through and do about the same thing except add in the uh, replacement um, code for it. Um, so the reason that um, uh, we're checking first to see if it actually does contain some tags is to figure out whether we have to process this particular um, chat text. Um, if we don't have to process it, then there's no point in doing all the extra stuff. Um, all right, so um, uh, first uh, let's grab a lowercase copy of the original text uh, to search through. Um, since uh, it'll be a copy, um, the positions will be the same. Um, so we'll um, uh, name this, um, yeah, we'll just name it text equals chat text to lower. There we go. And then uh, we'll loop through the um, symbols and uh, the code codes just like we did before, um, but instead of just checking to see if um, uh, one of 
these combinations were found, uh, we'll um, put that position into a variable so we can manipulate the original um, uh, text and then return that. Um, um, uh, actually, we'll rename this to search text. Uh, there we go, and then we'll do result text, uh, which is going to be just a copy of um, the original chat text, thereby uh, giving us the option to uh, manipulate stuff. All right, so we'll add um, a loop to loop through all of the um, control codes, like so. Then we'll, um, oops, my bad, there we go. Uh, we'll do another loop to loop through the um, uh, control symbols um, because we want this to be able to um, accept both um, the ampersand and the section sign. Um, we'll uh, symbols right here, there we go. Um, we'll accept both of them as input and then make sure that uh, the output uh, is only formatted for uh, using the section sign. Um, by doing this setup uh, we ensure that uh, the other example, um, uh, this one, um, will not have the um, ampersand converted into a section sign in case somebody writes this as part of the MOTD. Um, it's uh, simply to avoid that particular instance from um, happening. All right, so um, here we'll just grab position and we'll do the search text. Since we know that the search text is forced lowercase all the way through, <coughs> we should be able to um, check um, whether we find an index of the control symbols, like so, and the um, control codes, like so. There we go. Uh, if this particular position is greater than negative one, then we know that we can uh, grab the um, result text at um, this position. Uh, result text at this position. We force that to become a section sign. Um, um, what? String this. Do we need to do this? No. Property or index a string. This cannot be assigned to. It's read only. Ugh. Typical. Um, all right, so uh, it looks like we need to convert this into a HR array after all. All right, um, let's see, do, can we, um, let's see, what can we do here? Um, to char array, right there. All right, let's do that. Um, char like that and then uh, chat text dot to char array um, like so then we now we can do the result text at position equals uh, the section sign there we go all right um, the next thing that we need to manipulate um, is the actual control code itself of the uh, tag um, to force it to be um, um, lowercase as expected, um, to avoid having to check whether we actually need to um, uh, make a change here, we will simply just assign um, uh, result text, um, and that would be the position plus one, um, because it's the um, character following the initial control symbol and we'll uh, assign the control codes um, that we currently have um, referenced. Thereby, um, effectively only replacing uh, actual control tags uh, within the chat text 
um, with the ones that um, we expect it to be. Okay, um, so um, the last thing that we need to do is basically just return the um, uh, result setup and if memory serves um, we can simply just uh, do a um, return new string and then pass the as you can see uh, result text which, um, character array um, and it will then convert uh, that uh, character array into a proper string uh, returning the um, uh, contents of uh, whatever was passed in uh, in the correct format which means we will always get this particular setup um, and it will not touch um, uh, things that uh, should not be converted. There we go. So that takes care of one of them. Um, this would then be uh, all the stuff that we need to get a proper uh, MOTD format. Um, there's one more thing about the MOTD uh, text um, that we need to be aware of um, and that is that the Minecraft server um, will basically only accept um, one new line um, escape sequence. Uh, so if we if the user puts more than one in there, then um, the rest of it will basically be ignored. Um, uh, in some server builds, uh, some of the um, third party uh, server builds, uh, at times it may um, attempt to render a third line uh, it's seen before. Um, I'm not particularly up to speed with how every uh, current Minecraft server actually does render um, a new lined um, uh, server property set up. Uh, the same thing for clients. Um, there are differences um, between versions and such. Um, but um, we could put in something that, uh, say for example, removes um, any um, extra occurrences of uh, a new line setup, um, whether we do it or not, not really uh, a huge issue. Um, let's get some um, reference information up here. Converts the past uh, chat text into a properly formatted uh, MOTD. Um, text. There we go. The chat text to convert um, returns um, a uh, uh, returns the properly formatted MOTD version of the past chat text. Yeah. All right. So. That takes care of one of the two situations. The second one is building up um, the major uh, JSON stuff, um, which of course requires that we have some means of um, correctly converting um, uh, the um, uh, chat text into uh, the individual uh, chat elements. Uh, as in setting up, um, uh, let's see, where is it here? Um, no, it wasn't there. Oh, uh, right, we put it in as comments up here. There we go. Um, like so. Uh, first element would be um, whatever text needs to go in there, followed by whatever um, color reference. Uh, those color references have to be written up as the actual technical words for them, uh, for um, the client uh, to actually accept these correctly. Um, and the input that we will be getting um, is basically um, either the um, ampersand uh, encoding or um, the section sign encoding or a combination of both um, to make life a little easier on ourselves. 
um, <laughs> will simply force a conversion to MOTD first and then use that as the um, uh, initial um, um, uh, controls uh, tag setup um, because then we know for a fact that this um, will always be um, uh, in this particular one format uh, so we have um, a templated reference to use uh, to get this uh, split up correctly into the JSON elements uh, that we need to build. But um, we also need to um, set up basically uh, a list of all these technical names uh, <clears throat> with a reference to all of the different um, code setups uh, so we can correctly reference them and put them in there uh, the way they're supposed to be. Um, all right, so uh, first of all, um, let's see if we actually need to process this stuff. Um, I'll do pretty much the same thing as here. Um, if uh, this chat text um, has some kind of control ta tag in it, uh, then we'll do the actual processing of it, and if it doesn't, then we'll simply just return the chat text. Okay, so um, I know that uh, this particular setup will end up with us um, basically uh, placing a call to this twice, um, unless we do this particular conversion uh, in a different method, which we could do. Um, Actually, we might want to do that uh, just to avoid um, calling this twice by um, doing this as an example. Um, whoops. Uh, chat text. Oh. Um, the 2MOTD method already con does the proper conversion for us. Um, but in doing this, uh, we would effectively end up calling it twice, uh, since this expects um, uh, a JSON format. Um, this is also incorrect, because um, we definitely need to do some kind of conversion and basically uh, prefix it with um, uh, say uh, these uh, tell raw um, at a and then um, the JSON uh, table containing all the individual elements. Uh, so um, that pretty quickly makes this an incorrect setup. Um, so um, this we definitely need to. Um, change to um, contain actual JSON instead. This is pretty important. All right. Uh, we need we need a um, uniform way of uh, referencing uh, whatever control codes might or control tags might be within um, uh, the. Uh, past chat text, um, then split them up uh, and convert them into individual um, chat elements. And from there, um, uh, um, uh, build up um, uh, the actual JSON table that uh, we need to uh, uh, return from this. Uh, of course, again, here we've got a color problem uh, that we need to look into. Um, so, um, We'll see if we can tackle all this somehow. Um, somebody has stolen all of my coffee. My cup is empty. Who's drinking my coffee? Let's get some more coffee. Ah, cheers. Mm, good, 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 good. Okay. Um, let's see what we can do. Um, in terms of this, uh, we definitely need to do this a little bit differently so we don't end up um, placing the same call over and over and over to the same method. Um, that's what we were doing, so uh, let's get rid of this one and do um, 
a, a little helper method here instead. So we can um, call a common piece of code to um, do the actual um, uh, initial conversion stuff. Um, so we will make one called convert to uh, MOTD. Um, it's basically going to be a copy of um, what's in the to MOTD method at the moment, um, effectively moving the uh, code up here instead, and then we'll just place a call to this um, uh, convert to, and this would then be the chat text stuff, and then we'll go grab the code from down here, um, which uh, is this bit of code. So I'll grab this and stuff it up here, like so, and that then handles the actual conversion, and then we'll fix this up to effectively just um, do the conversion here. There we go. Now we have one common method to do the conversion for two build-ups. Um, in this particular uh, public method we just need the uh, correctly formatted MOTD setup for it, uh, so we'll simply just return it. Uh, whereas in... Um, I'll grab this and move it up there to um, here and um, converts the past chat text into um, properly section sign formatted um, text. There we go. The chat text to convert. Um, Returns a uh, properly formatted section sign um, copy of the original chat text. There we go. All right. Now that all of a sudden allows us to um, place a call to convert to MOTD, uh, which does not. Uh, do the control tag check. Uh, it simply converts. It does nothing else. Um, and thereby we have removed um, the call to has control tags twice. Um, cleaning up the code a little bit. Alright. Um, we may want to call this, um, I don't know, yeah, we'll do MOTD version of it. There we go. Okay. Um, here we will, um, let's see, we'll just force a, um, um, yeah, we might as well. Um, yeah, we'll do a um, tell raw at a, followed by a JSON begin, um, uh, sorry, JSON um, table thingy, um, and the first one needs to contain um, text, colon, and then followed by whatever's in here, and ending up with a close. There we go. So now we've converted this into um, basically only a um, text entry without any color, kind of color setup or anything. So whatever's being put in here, if it doesn't have any kind of control tags in it, then we'll simply convert it into um, a tell raw uh, setup. There we go. Um, of course, um, this isn't particularly useful uh, in case we want to do something different with it. Um, so let's remove this tell raw stuff and then just simply do the uh, JSON stuff instead. There we go. All right. Um, now returns a um, single chat, um, a single JSON chat element 
containing the past chat text. Okay, so next up we need to figure out how to um, uh, split up um, the contents of whatever we got back from the conversion um, and convert it into um, uh, a proper um, um, chat element setup. Um, there are some things about how uh, Minecraft actually handles uh, the individual chat elements. Um, part of that setup is um, that um, some aspects of the chat element list um, that is passed to uh, the chat handler um, may be remembered from chat element to chat element, uh, whereas others uh, may be reset back to a default setting. Um, things like, say for example, underline or strike through uh, may um, uh, travel from one chat element uh, to the next, which means if we don't want the next bit of it, say, underlined, then we have to force it uh, off uh, so it doesn't replicate across the remaining uh, chat elements uh, throughout the text itself. Um, I've seen instances where um, it does uh, exactly the same thing for colors, and in some situation in situations it doesn't. Um, so there are differences there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why the client um, handles uh, the text chat, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, chat elements um, kind of randomly like this, uh, but it does. Um, so um, it's something that we need to keep in mind when building this, especially when we, uh, or if we at some point uh, decide to add um, say, uh, underline, strike through, bold, italic, stuff like that. Uh, so um, something to keep in mind. Um, for now it will just stick with uh, the, co the uh, coloring and know that uh, once the final um, JSON table containing all the individual uh, elements has been executed, uh, the chat usually resets back to its default setup, which is uh, no kind of um, uh, formatting whatsoever and uh, the text being rendered as white. Uh, that is the initial premise for uh, rendering uh, the chat elements. Whatever changes we make will be reset after it's been executed. Um, some of these uh, things that I just mentioned um, they are not always uh, that easy to find uh, information about. Uh, it's something that I've found um, through some previous um, testing of um, similar setups like this, um, uh, and uh, through uh, plugin development um, back in the days when I did that. Um, so there have been plenty of instances where I've had the chance to uh, mess about with these uh, chat elements to uh, figure out exactly how the client acts, how the server acts, um, uh, which kind of setups uh, might do what uh, and what might be expected as a commonality between uh, the different server kinds as well as the different client uh, versions. So. Um, some of it is just pure experience, and some of it you might actually be able to find on, uh, say, a wiki page or somebody that's written an article about it somewhere. Um, in any case, I thought I'd uh, mention it. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Now, we know at this point uh, we only have one control symbol, uh, which would be the section sign. Um, However, um, the section sign might be sh uh, something that should be shown in chat for whatever reason. Uh, so we can't exactly just go up and split on uh, the section sign itself, um, simply because that um, could end up with us um, basically putting um, a piece of um, uh, control code in there where it shouldn't be. Um, in case somebody decides to put up, say, uh, 15 section signs in chat, whatever. Um, 
So, um, how should we split this up? Uh, we know that we are getting something that looks along the lines of um, this one. So we'll grab this one quick and um, copy it down here so we have a reference. Um, this is what we get. Okay. Um, keep in mind that the above might contain that should be rendered as actual text, not a control symbol. Okay. So that's something that we definitely need to keep in mind when we uh, do this uh, conversion. Uh, another thing that uh, we definitely need to know is um, whether um, uh, there is some kind of prefix text uh, that um, should be handled um, uh, before uh, the first control code uh, or control tag sorry shows up. Um, so if somebody for example puts in um, um, help followed by some kind of control tag that uh, changes the color uh, where uh, help should be whatever uh, the uh, chat decides as default. Um, that would be a situation where uh, we would have um, a part of it um, um, uh, basically be uh, available or uh, exist before the first control tag shows up. So again, one of those things where we need to keep things um, uh, in mind uh, so we don't end up orphaning uh, part of the text. All right, um, let's see. Um, now we could um, we could potentially split this um, at the section sign, and then just check uh, the very first character um, within each uh, individual part uh, to figure out whether we need to do, to um, put something in there or not. Um, and then um, uh, build up the um, um, table from there. Um, but, um, I think we are, uh, before we start building this, um, I think I need to um, grab a quick break, um, get my uh, um, yeah, I need uh, a quick break nature call and I also need to respond to a phone message quick. Uh, so I will be back shortly. <laughs> 